and the materials that they recovered from the from the actual crashed uh, UFO uh, were said to have been partially reassembled in an under underground facility in Kanata. Is that is that a place in Canada? I don't know. That's what it says. Kanata, in the yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And now Kanata, Canada, Kanada, Canada. Do you know the name of that that bunker, Dan? <laughs> no, I don't. It's a Defen bunker. Ah. It's yeah. a very historical and important landmark to Canadian history, actually. Something not a lot of people know about. Us, me, Zell, Braden, we learned about this in high school, obviously. Yeah. Right? So for those of you that don't know, you're not learned on uh, Canadian history. Basically, the story goes like everybody knows post-World War II, we've got the Americans had Operation Paperclip. Russians had Osef Aikin. Well, there wasn't a lot left, but the Canadians were actually able to get their hands on an architect. Oh. And a little known fact is prior to World War II and the Cold War, Canada was so far behind on their bunker technology that they kidnapped this German architect. I think it's like Hans von Velvet or something like that. So they kidnapped him. And he actually created the world's <laughs> most deepest bunker in all of the world. And when he said it, the Canadians thought he was saying the deep in bunker. So then the, that's what it got its name from, Zadifan Bunka. Yeah, it's uh, it really revolutionized Canada. Like, you know, they, they say the states, you know, with their uh, like aerospace technology or the missile, like the V2 rockets, right? Russia got all the aerospace engineers, but we got the bunkers, baby. We like got Canada, the we have the, the deepest. Deepest bunkers. Just thickest bunkers, right? Most just, beautiful it's bunkers you've ever seen. But that's it. There's um, nothing in them. They're just deep and thick. Yeah, it's empty. Hello. <laughs> no, no. Believe it or not, this, just, the, the Defen bunker, like they have capabilities of doing like surgeries and shit in this bunker. Like they, you can do pretty much anything that a hospital can do in here. Like it's wild. I went and watched yeah. a virtual tour of it. It's really cool. I just, I love the, I love the image of like, you know, the Americans going door to door, p picking these people up, paying, <laughs> pay paying money. Uh, Russians going door to door at gunpoint, kidnapping. Then you got like uh, like two Canadian guys being like, oh, he's not home either, eh? All right, to the next one. The next door, like, no, he's gone too. And then they find, find this guy's like, dude, we got the bunker guy, eh? We just <laughs> asked him, you know, can you please come with us? He just came. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true yeah. that the 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 Defen bunker is a, like a, a, at the time this was this bunker was gonna hold like it was our it was like our government's like nuclear fallout Follow bunker shelter. where like yeah. our government would well, go that's why there. It, that's it had hospitals the like, equipment and shit in it like it's right. it so that's remarkable. why they would that's why they would ship the the alien corpses there so it would make sense yeah, right absolutely. yeah. Uh, und, und deepest bunker in all of the world. <laughs> it's well it's weird if you think like in Canada's like there I. When you hear about this kind of stuff, like this kind of stuff doesn't get out. So even like me hearing about the Defen bunker, obviously, <laughs> when I started looking into this, I was kind of surprised. Cause I'm like, you know, I didn't even really know that we had that. So it, it's kind of amazing. You're like, well, if we if we did have some sort of secrets in Canada, I'm sure like this would be one of the spots they would take it. I mean, it seems like a very like it was facility. only active until about 1994, though, right? Like yeah. we were pretty young when it was decommissioned. Yeah. So. Probably not What's trapped in there? <laughs> um, so, so the letter went on to describe in detail some of the components and like what their functions were of the UFO, uh, talking about how the UFO itself was made up of a matrix di <laughs> dielectric magnesium alloy and driven by some type of pulsed electromagnetic fields, uh, which were generated by a cold fusion reactor. Uh, and apparently it also, uh, it also displayed offensive capabilities, which utilized some type of independently targeting electronic beam weapons. Uh, so uh, there's kind of strange and all of this stuff because it, when they have these beam weapons apparently in the cargo hold there were also ordnance racks that had 50 soviet nuclear warheads within it uh <laughs> which seems uh interesting i don't i don't know whether were they just picking them up but like were they um had, had to put them that, somewhere uh, yeah, for a friend. yeah 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 These, those aren't ours <laughs> <laughs> Um, but apparently, uh, the most important alien tech uh, discovery at this crash site were these 
two millimeter spheroid brain implants, which could be surgically implanted through the nasal orifice. And I guess I guess we're talking total recall. Um, and the individual could be fully monitored and controlled. Ooh, that's interesting. So, uh, and uh, the letter goes on to go ahead and uh, level the, the finger at the CIA and the Canadian government being uh, very interested in this technology and actively supporting mind slave, this in the letter, this is word, mind slave experiments for years. But here, 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 here MK Ultra, right? Well, like, they, like, that's not, when you, when you say it in the context of like the CIA working with Canada, uh, working on Project M MK Ultra, it's like we know there was Canadian ties to that program, right? So it's like if that's not too far fetched for me to be like, I think it's were they trying out other stuff? Who knows, right? I, I think it's very important also to point out that this was written like a fucking manifesto. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, we did yeah, <laughs> Canada, Canada of teaming up with fucking Red China and Iraq to hide this, you know, this crash. Half the stuff was written on fucking playing cards. Uh, it, yes, yeah, it there, was were, flagged there were for, a collection of cards on there, and it was okay, flagged because here, it here, sounded here. awfully, awfully like a fucking white supremacist manifesto. And uh, uh vaguely, yeah, I think there was theories. some of that in there. <laughs> now, right? like, the one thing that I was when I was thinking about, like, well, why, like, why in the playing cards and stuff, I thought in my head that maybe if it's like maybe these kind of bunkers and stuff were kind of run like how uh, you know, all these like shops in the mall run their stores with these teenage girls like look in your purse before you go you know what I mean? like you're not allowed to leave so someone like basically gives you a frisk so they're like you can't bring out any loose leaf papers <laughs> and he's like oh i just got my you know my deck of bicycle playing cards he's like oh yeah see you later like so that's that's where I, these were all written on playing cards because that's he would make the notes in there he'd copy them right but then he couldn't bring paper out they're like nothing you can't bring anything out right like well if you're thinking know. about like a way to like stop information from leaking or coming out right you're like no pa no paper or any trail is leaving the facility right like, so I, I was kind of thinking about photocopies of like aliens that. in there too yeah. <laughs> i don't know it's just it was pretty bizarre like it's yeah it, it, i like this on... to early stages of the qn on fucking reddit pages and shit like just uh, all over the place with the random conspiracies and fucking the, well, uh, that's what and that's what most people thought about this is they're just like this is a fucking hoax what a joke <laughs> yeah the, the entire thing kind of culminates in, in the climax of of talking about these brain implants being uh able to transmit at the same wavelength that the brain uses and that so the allowing researchers to substantially control these test subjects and then uh, apparently they, they, but, you know, fortunately for us, uh, according to Guardian, the implants can be detected by magnetic resolution scanning technology. But uh, those who have been implanted uh, by the aliens are classified as zombies in all caps. <laughs> and the zombies have been programmed to help overthrow mankind in the near future. The zombies have been programmed to overthrow mankind. I mean, like, 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 I was just like, it seems like a weird thing because you'd be like, why? Why would you have zombies overthrow? Like, unless zombies is like a code word for like, you know, pe you know, people like under this mind control. Where seems, they're just like, seems like a, it seems like a pretty that. on the nose classification for uh, yeah. for something to be like. Are you going to really call them zombies? Like, you're not going to give them some well, kind I guess of like makes sleepers sense or yeah, yeah. something that's a little bit more vague. Uh, they are, they're just you know? mindless, right? So. I suppose, but I like. I feel like using zombies is a little bit. You you would call them something else to, to for plausible deniability to be like, oh, we were talking about something else, like sheep or you know something, you know, a little bit, <laughs> like a little bit more inscrutable or something. Uh, anyways, uh, you know, after receiving this, uh, apparently uh, Tom Theophanes, like you know, kind of showed it around to some of his colleagues, and for the most part, apparently they 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 thought it was a joke. Uh, they they thought it was somebody kind of messing with them. Uh, you know, not taking them seriously, which, you know, most UFO researchers are uh, of these things. They are, you're wary of this, at least if I feel like if you're a legit uh, UFO researcher, you would be wary of this kind of thing being like, I'm not really, there's no real, there wasn't really any corroborating evidence or anything. It was just this one-off kind of, uh, you know, strange 
letter that somebody sent you. Uh, so uh, he reached out to the Q-Foreign uh, director, Harry Tokars, uh, you know, who also reached out to some people and looking One for... One of these names sound fake. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then they, they tried to find somebody who was uh, familiar with the area of Carlton to kind of check out the story like to see if any of this any of this story was true like may maybe not all of it but maybe hey guys thanks for watching i know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments but here's the next one over here or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation you get ac full access to it on patreon anyways thanks guys enjoy the next video